The Midget Mustang MM1, a single seat, aerobatic, performance sport experimental plane. And this one isn't a typical example, as it was built by a craftsman with some subtle modifications that give it just the right look. And the performance? It doesn't disappoint either. Let's get to know this plane, its builder, and its current caretaker, Paul. I had met Paul at a recent fly-in when I saw this midget Mustang sitting there and recalled drooling over the for sale ad a while ago and dreaming of owning it. I made sure to meet Paul and chat about his experience with this beauty. This is the second part of my interview with Paul. If you didn't see part one, you don't want to miss the video about his incredible Whitman tailwind, which I will link to at the end in the comments. Now let's get to learning more about this beautiful Mustang. The airplane was designed in 1948 by Dave Long, who was the engineer for Piper Aircraft. Originally it was called a pea shooter. Dave Long called it the pea shooter, but people started thinking, hey, it looks like a Mustang. So it, it adopted the name Midget Mustang. And Dave's um, idea was to, to be competitive in the, in the formula class. The cassette was very popular, so people were trying to compete with the cassette. Well, it, it couldn't compete with the cassette. It wasn't fast enough, maybe, or it just wasn't the airplane, but people liked it as a sport plane. There is no kit. You know, it, it was built from scratch, basically. This aircraft was built by Kit Sodergren. And as the story goes, this guy Kit, who's a genius in my mind, he's just some hippie building an airplane, musician, building this airplane in his garage. People got wind of it, and they started coming over and looking at his workmanship, and that's what got him the job at the City College. They said, you need to be teaching sheet metal at the aeronautics program. In 1986, when this aircraft was finished, it, that was the year that I started um, a and P school at the Sacramento City College. It's also the first year that Kit started as an instructor. So I remember hand propping this airplane for Kit when he just started flying it and actually watching some of the final phases of building it. All these years go by and I'm sitting right here at this airport and Kit and his friend came over to the golf course um, for lunch and I was telling him about looking at the tailwinds and stuff and then Kit told me he was gonna sell the Mustang. Well, I called Kit up and said, I'd like to come and look at it before you get rid of it because I remember that airplane. And then I fell in love with it. I decided, well, I wonder if I, if I fit in it and I fit in it fine. There's actually a lot more room than it appears once you're down in it, you're wearing it, but you can get in it. Um, so one thing led to another, I helped Kit with kind of a annual on it and just because I wanted to learn about it. And that led to maybe some months later, test flight and this is an airplane that's only got one seat so it's like all right be careful <laughs> and he knew that i had a lot of time in in airplanes too so it, it went well I, I i really don't even like to say bought it i adopted it kit feels like he's still in very involved with it as the crew chief he the only reason he got rid of it is because he's, he's almost 80. Um, he couldn't get a third class medical anymore. This doesn't qualify for light sport because of its stall speed and cruise speed and all that. We both feel that it worked out. He feels like I'm the right guy to have it and, and I'm glad that Kit's still very involved. One, one very unique thing that Kit did he designed this canopy, which I think is really cool. It just looks like a fighter, you know, but this was Kit's design. Most of them just had the, the, the one piece of glass coming all the way across. So that was a Kit thing. And um, I really liked the way that came out. When he was ready to do the cowling, they had some guy come out that was very versed in, in making cowlings. And basically in a simplified form, you got the engine there, you bag it up, you spray it with foam, and then this artist comes out and starts carving that foam to replicate the cowling, and then you build glass around it, split it in half, and 
voila, you got a cowling. I mean, I'm making it sound simple. It's, it's very labor intensive. The other thing I need to mention, and Steve Whitman comes into this again, because when Kit was building this airplane, he would talk to Steve, and Steve told Kit, just make sure you build the wing correctly. When you built it for plans, you built the ribs, and then you skinned it, there was a lot of washboarding because the plans weren't precise enough. Well, Kit took the time to shim every rib individually, and if you look at this wing, it's just beautifully constructed. And so this airplane turned out to be very light and very straight. It, it, it flies beautifully. I gotta just give credit to Kit. It took him six years and 6,000 hours of, of build time. And he flew this a lot. He took it to Oshkosh and won with it in 86. There's actually a fuel tank in the back and a header tank and Kit would just take it up to 10,000 feet and fly it across country. It's an O200, um, 100 horse. So if you get up to five or 6,000 feet and lean it back, you can get it down around four and a half gallons an hour. It cruises 175, 180. So wow, very, that's impressive. Very, very efficient. Paul, what's it like to fly this thing? I want to say this is probably the most challenging airplane I've flown so far, just because, well, it's the first um, um, airplane I've flown with this kind of uh, power to weight ratio. Th this airplane only weighs 600 pounds and has 100 horse, so. And Kit told me before I flew it, it's very, it's, it's a rudder airplane, meaning it's, and it's, it's the most sensitive uh, rudder that I've ever flown. It's, it's pretty frisky. The other thing that makes it maybe a little more challenging is that the visibility is not as good, especially in the three-point attitude. Kit tended to wheel land it. I shoot for three-point just because I, I want to be going as slow as I can. And I, I just, I prefer to land a tailwheel airplane fully stalled if I can. Once it's in the air, it, it flies, it flies beautifully. I'm gonna take off speed it's probably, it's about 80 miles an hour and it builds speed quickly. Climbs out, fantastic, of course. The, the, the difference is with a little bit less wing than the tailwind, um, this one comes across the fence a little bit, a little bit faster. It flies real good, around 100, you know? Get her slowed up to 100 and it's got flaps. Um, I think Kit got to where he could come across the fence at 75. Two of, the, two of the, the nicest examples of home-built aircraft, really, I'm, I'm super fortunate. You know, to have the owner, the builder, right in my backyard. And Paul, I have to say, we were fortunate to have had this chance to talk with you about both these beautiful planes. You know, Paul mentioned that Kit Sodergren might be available to give us more details about how he built this plane and its aviation journey. Let me know in the comments if that's something you would like to see. As my friend Doug and I departed for the flight home, we chatted about how awesome general aviation can be. We had just spent some time getting to know a great pilot, learn a lot about a couple really cool planes, and get a close look at two of the nicest experimental sport planes either of us have ever seen. Turns out the weather was gorgeous as well. Wouldn't you agree? As we always say on YouTube, please like and subscribe to support this channel and to ensure you get notified the next time I post another Silva adventure. Thanks for coming along and I hope to see you on the next one.